Hi there, it's Joe again. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how you can export your beautiful dungeon into a format that is usable as a battle map in virtual role-playing tabletop software, such as Fantasy Grounds and Battlegrounds, OpenG uh, OpenRPG and so forth. Now, in order to do this, we're going to have to understand a couple of key features in Campaign Cartographer. The first is the use of sheets to set various special effects on your design, and the second is to discuss resolution and the Save As option. Let's start with Sheets. We've used Sheets before, I'm just going to click on the Sheets button over here, the Sheets and Effects button. We've used these before to simply select a pre-existing sheet. I'm going to select the standard 500 foot by 400 foot dungeon interior sheet, which gives us a nice fading around our floors and a little bit of beveling and that's about it. Well that's fine, but I find for a virtual tabletop it's a really good idea to create your own special set of sheets that really enhance the colours. In order to do this we're going to go to the sheets again and we're going to set up our own new sheets style based on the existing one that we've got here. So I'm going to click new and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it 50 pixels per 5 foot. And I'm going to click on OK. There we go. You can see that the new set of sheets has inherited all the properties that we had loaded in before, such as walls being beveled and floors having an inner glow. Let's click on OK for the moment. Take a look at what that looks like. As you can see, it's still the same. Now, what we're going to do is go back to our sheets and effects, and we're going to start messing things up. First of all, we'll click on the floors. You need to check this little checkbox here to actually move yourself to the floors option. Basically, we're activating the floors sheets. And you can see that we've got an inner glow. Let's just edit that inner glow special effect and take a look at what that's going to do. We have a very slight blur of 5 foot. We have a various we have a color opacity of 150 and we could make the inner glow a specific mixture of red, green and blue. I'm actually going to increase the red slightly and the green slightly which should give us a an interesting shade. Let's click on OK. OK. And as you can see we've now got the slight greeny hue. I just want this to look a little bit more eerie. Let's click on this again. I'm going to click on our inner glow and I'm going to edit it and I'm actually going to reduce the amount that it blurs down to only 3 foot. Let's now move to our walls. The walls are where we really want to do some work. As you can see currently we've only got a bevel. I'm going to edit this bevel and I'm going to make the bevel half a foot. In other words, much larger. I won't change anything else at the moment, but now I'm going to start adding some effects. The first thing I'm going to add is an inner glow, sorry, actually is an outer glow. This means that the wall will be surrounded by, in this case, I'm going to use black, a nice dark color, and I'm going to give it a strength of one, which means it'll be fairly strong and intense, but not over the top. And I'm going to give it a blur radius of two feet it will be outside of the wall area itself. And I'm also going to give the walls, add, a, hmm, let's see, a wall shadow. Now the wall shadow by default here is set to 16 foot. Well that's way too much. I'm only going to give it a wall shadow of say 7 foot and a blur radius of a good 5 foot because I really don't want this to be overpowering. The opacity we might even reduce that down a little bit to say 45%. Let's now take a look at what, this, what it looks like. As you can see our walls now have a nice crisp glow to them and a good shadow across them as well. Our room is almost right but if you've noticed our columns and our pulpit and statue don't have a shadow and I really want them to have a little bit of a shadow just to add that last little bit of realism. In order to do this, we're going to create a new sheet. These ones are all of the default sheets that come with this dungeon template. We're going to add a new sheet and we're going to call it hmm, Miscellaneous Shadows. In other words, it's a sheet that anything that gets put on this will have a shadow. 
By default, it comes all the way down to the bottom of the list, which means that it will always be printed on the very top layer. We're going to move it up to just above, let's see, just underneath our walls and above our symbols. There we go. And we're going to add to this sheet the effect of having a wall shadow. But instead of being a very large wall shadow, we'll only have it as a five foot one with a blur radius of, say, four foot. Bingo. What? Our columns still don't have a shadow. This is because all of these items, when they were placed down on the surface of the map, were placed down with their appropriate sheets, which was probably the symbol layer. What we're going to do is use the Edit Properties or the Change Properties button here and select this column and this column and this column, the statue, the pulpit, and this column and this column and this column. Right clicking, do it, and we're going to say use the sheet miscellaneous shadows for these items that we have selected. When we click on OK and redraw, you'll see that they now, because they now belong to that sheet, all have the appropriate shadows. Doesn't that look like a lot more realistic? Fantastic. The really good thing with Campaign Cartographer is, of course, now you've made these amendments to your set of style sheets, you can come back and reuse these on any other map. So once you've got a style sheet that you really like, and you've set it up and saved it, you can come back and use it again and again and again. All that you need to do next time you've got another dungeon is select your 50 pixels per 5 foot style. Yep. And you'll get the same sort of effects that we're seeing here. Now we're going to add a 5 foot grid over the surface of this map. To do that I'm going to expand the map so I can see the full view and then I'm going to use the draw function, draw a hex or a square overlay and I'm going to select a grid square with a spacing of, you guessed it, 5 foot. I don't want labelling of any sort. In fact, I'm going to turn the labelling off on the outside as well. And we'll apply that. Bingo. We now have a grid setting right across the map. If we zoom in to our map, you can see that it's neatly broken up, ready for battle maps. Personally, I think that these lines are a little bit too rigid, a little bit too harsh. So what I will often do is go to the style sheet, select my grid layer, edit it, oops, add to it first of all, and then I'm going to add a glow to the lines, and I'm going to make the lines a very soft blue glow with a blur radius of, say, half a foot, 0 0.5. There we go. And then I'm going to add to this again a bit of a transparency. There it is. And we'll have the, the lines only coming in at 50%. Clicking on OK. You can see that our map lines now I've got a slight glow to them, and if we zoom in, you can see that they're slightly transparent. That's a lovely effect. Let's zoom out to the full map. 